So it's not evidence. So our message was if the prior three years had taken you to well above your asset allocation target to stocks, cut back to neutral or normal. Don't sell down below that. Don't buy into the dip, but go back to normal and enjoy the ride that we thought would lean towards that 4,500 level. Okay, so are you still at 4,500 for a year end? So you just expect a really great start to 2024. I do. I think that we didn't see it as swift as it was. I wouldn't have expected to be at 4,500 by now. We are. So we enjoyed the ride, and we also said to folks, don't just run the value of the defense like a lot of folks are suggesting. You have that plan to grow the value. Boy, a lot of you have sale. But, yeah, I think that we're probably going to just tread water, and active selection is going to be very important if you're looking for returns um, in positive territory for the balance of the year in any meaningful, meaningful way. But then through by 2024 mid-year, we're thinking 5,000, 4,800, 5,000 as we move into 2020. I don't see how you get there without big tech remaining strong and maybe even getting stronger. And it's so like uh, overweight uh, versus where it normally is. What keeps that going? Well, you know, big tech, we're neutral on big tech. Uh, we've outperformed in the strategy so far, our most aggressive strategy, pretty handsomely by being a little underweight big tech, the mega eight. And that's because broadly technology looks really good. Consumer discretionary also has been on fire. And so the Russell's got to run like crazy. But are, is this in effect a uh, bet on small and mid caps? If you're neutral on big tech, but you still think the S&P is up 12% a year from now? No, I think I think it's over advertised. It's been a narrow market. You can argue, sure, there's all kinds of statistics that can support that point. I can tell you of a number of stocks that are up 40, 50, 100% this year, that, and they ain't Apple. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Give us a specific. Okay. Uh, so within consumer discretionary, there's just a plethora of them. You got, uh, you know, Tesla fits in that group, but outside of the Mega 8, you have Deckers, you have Bookings, you have Royal Caribbean. People are cruising again, for goodness sakes, and they are spending and drinking and eating and having a good time. Uh, so within consumer, there's a lot. Within tech, I'd, I'd call out uh, Palo Alto, Synopsys. Um, They've got earnings coming up. They do. And I think that as Apple and these others are looking for uh, designing their own ships, making their own ships, Synopsys fits you know, right in there as a growth driver. Service Could now. Could you buy us a boat because Palo Alto's got earnings at the end of the I would. Okay. I would. I would. We own them. Okay. okay. In full disclosure. Uh, ServiceNow would fall in that uh, category, Adobe, Arista. I mean, these are all names that are not Mega 8 that I think are positioned very well uh, for the drive for productivity, the drive for green, cloud, all those things. They're not going away. What do you do with financials today? So we're a little, we're cautious on financials. They have been. And I would argue that if you believe that the U.S. is, is not going to suffer uh, a uncomfortable recession, a lot of folks then would say, well, you know, go to cyclicals, let's go to financials. I'd say be a little careful, be very selective. We under owned them a little bit. Go to industrials. There is a capital spending boom. If you want cycle, you want economically tethered growth, uh, go to the industrials and materials. And I there we love some names there. All right. Uh, so let me two real quick. United Rental uh, and E. Okay. Appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, good to have you. Thanks, John. Still ahead, some of the biggest investors made some big tech moves in the last quarter. Let's look at how they played in the tech rally and AI mania is next.
back hedge fund managers revealing their second quarter portfolio moves overnight in the 13 out filings. But despite the recent tech rally, the world's richest investors seem to be mixed on the sector. That's the pickup dug into those trades for us in today's tech check. Hey, John. Yeah, the tech spider ETF XLK gained a whopping 15% during the second quarter. Many of the hedge fund managers we tracked rode that wave higher, adding to their big tech stakes in the three months through June. Co2 bought big amounts of Amazon, Microsoft, and AMD. Appaloosa boosted exposure to tech broadly, buying shares of Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Intel, Meta, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. Pershing Square added to its very lucrative Alphabet stake. Fellow sometimes activist third point, though, paired back its stake in Alphabet, opting instead for large buys in Amazon, Taiwan Semi, NVIDIA, AMD, and Microsoft. According to HFR, which collects aggregate hedge fund data, tech-focused hedge funds were the best performing strategy group among the 28 hedge fund strategies they studied. Tech funds returned 3.4% in July alone, helping notch gains of about 15% year-to-date. That's about three times the performance of the average hedge fund, although still trailing the S&P. Going long big tech, though, has been the most crowded trade for the fourth month in a row, according to data compiled by Bank of America. So, you know, it's popular trade, but it's also a crowded trade, which to some could signal that maybe, uh, you know, good times are, you know, due for some kind of pullback, which we've kind of seen yeah. in the last six weeks. Well, I'm wondering who's thinking differently here versus, you know, following the crowd. It's sort of like, okay, we're well, buying NVIDIA, Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, who was it? Right. Um, but yeah, I guess the question is, like you said, where do they go from here? But B, did anybody do anything that's like, oh, well, that was unexpected and maybe smart? Yes. Yeah. Well, Tiger Global, in terms of not following the crowd, Tiger Global historically has been a very tech-oriented firm. You want to know what their top five for the quarter was? What? Apollo. Private, well, I mean, now they say they're not a private equity. Alternative investment management firm. Mm. Uh, they were selling up big tech, actually. Um, you know, their biggest sells were all the, you know, the major big tech names. Biggest five was Apollo. Um, also thinking potentially differently, although keep in mind, these are just snapshots. They're long equity positions. We don't know how managers are positioned on the short side, but we do sometimes see puts. And so Michael Burry did have a pretty sizable uh, put position on the QQQs and ETF tracking those. So, you know, maybe a little bit of bearish there, bearishness there. It could also be, of course, portfolio protection, maybe some hedging against other positions. We don't actually know. Uh, my colleague Yun Lee um, on the dot-com side reached out to him, but I don't believe she's heard back on specifics, you know, uh, surrounding that trade. Yeah, and, and I think Burry was sort of betting against the S&P overall, yep. too, yep. which these days is kind of a bet against the tech. Right, exactly. So S&P and the QQQs, I should have said that. Yeah, he did yeah. both indexes. I had puts on both of those. Notional value for those trades uh, combined was about $1.6 billion. So pretty sizable, uh, you know, relative to the size of his fund. But again, we don't know if that's necessarily just hedging individual stocks or if it's an actual directional play, a directional bet on, you know, where he sees those two, those two indexes going. Well, we've just heard from somebody who thinks that the market can still run from here and you now somebody who's betting against it. So that's what it takes to make the market. Plus with the right. Still ahead, cobalt, nickel, lithium, all critical for America's energy transition. But a new report out showed Mass是高科技啊 无论它是ETF也好，它的持权也好，那个持货也好，大家都在做这个。现在人们呢，投资人呢，最关心的是交易量、波动，对吧？和波动幅度，波动幅度越大呢，投资人就越感兴趣。特别是那些买持权的。持权的去买持权的话 
呃 ISOXL 半导体这种指数，还有了一种天然气指数啊 BOL、BOIL 这些呢，它的波动是非常大的。如果你买它的期权的话呢，加上一百块钱，对吧？你搞对方向了。他一天就可以涨到一千块钱，就像你在这个赌场一样的，对吧？当然，这个东西要求呢，你就是比较准确，要求你那个稳准狠。如果你能够做到稳准狠的话呢，这个就可以赚很多钱。这个道理就在这里。以前的时候呢，我以前做过很多交易啊，做的都非常不错的。不过最近一两年做的不怎么样，呵呵不理想，因为那个要求啊，心态好，对吧？风险控制的比较好，然后呢，胆子要要有胆量。一般的人呢，你是如果是亏不起的话，你这个胆量就不大。以前的时候呢，我是用百分之一或者百分之五的这个资金去去拨移的话呢。就非常的这个 confident， 就不用害怕，对吧？所以呢，就比较成功。但我上次我有几次比较成功的东西呢，现在啊，有一次我是五千块钱做外汇，还有几十倍的杠杆，对吧？三天呢赚了到十一万。另外呢，就是说呢，另外有一有有,有一次呢，我用百分之五的资金呢，二十多万块钱赚了这个，啊，六天赚了一百多万，对吧？一百六十多万。后来呢，因为没钱嘛，那个投资人比较少，所以呢，也想啊，碰碰机会啊，能够。一举定乾坤，但是这种情况是比较难，所以我最近一段时间呢，我就是想呢 ，focus 就是聚焦在这个低风险的、连续稳定的回报，回到正确的轨道上来，对吧？所以呢，第一，自己不冒险；第二呢，带领大家，对吧？致富。当然，所谓的带领大家致富，就是希望能够。帮助大家，然后呢，自己也从中，啊，得到一点小小小的收获和利益，啊